Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you uh, briefly about amino acids and then I will take you into classification of amino acids. I will explain a uh, different classification of amino acids. So this is part one of amino acid video. In my part two amino acid video, I will explain you importance of some of the selected amino acids. Now let's get into the part one that is the classification of amino acids. There are 20 standard amino acids and these 20 standard amino acids are found in mammalian proteins. So why these are referred as standard amino acids? Standard amino acids are the ones that contain uh, means that will have a specific codons uh, which are coming from DNA and then mRNA and then translated right and also there are more than 100 amino acids as such but they do all of them do not have codons only 20 amino acids have codon which are found in our proteins are simply referred as standard amino acids. All these 20 standard amino acids they have they are referred as alpha amino acids why they are called as alpha amino acids as you can see uh, structure of amino acids here is the structure of amino acid it has got alpha carbon and then as you know carbon has got 4 valency. So, a uh, carboxyl group is bound to that alpha carbon, amino group is bound to alpha carbon, then H, then the R group. So, uh, uh, a carboxyl group that is attached to the alpha carbon is called as a primary carboxyl group, amino group attached to the alpha carbon is called as a primary amino group and also as you can see carboxyl group is uh, uh, shown as protonated here, amino group is uh, deprotonated. So now let us see uh, under physiological pH which is 7.4 so uh, and the pK of the primary carboxyl group is uh, uh, average pK is around 2 and the average pK of primary amino group is 9.5. So with this because of this pH pK relationship so what will happen to this individual amino acids when it is present in the bloodstream. So this amino acid it will undergo the like primary carboxyl group of amino acid will undergo deprotonation and primary amino group will undergo protonation and that is because of the pH pK relationship. So what is pH pK relationship? I have a video on pH pK relationship of an amino acid why primary carboxyl group will undergo protona uh, deprotonation, why primary amino group will undergo protonation. So please watch that video the, uh, the link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing uh, right now in the upper right corner. Okay? So now, now let us jump into classification of amino acids. Now my very first classification of amino acid is essential amino acids, non-essential amino acids and semi-essential amino acids. What is the meaning of essential amino acids? Essential amino acids are the ones that are absolutely essential in our diet because simply we cannot synthesize them in our body. So we really need them in our diet to produce proteins or to synthesize new proteins. Okay, Let us see what all these essential amino acids. So we have uh, threonine which is an essential amino acid, then we have uh, valine which is an essential amino acid, then we have tryptophan which is an essential amino acid, we have isoleucine which is an essential amino acid, then leucine, lysine, uh, phenylalanine and methionine. These are the 8 absolutely essential amino acids. So they are threonine, valine, tryptophan, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, phenylalanine and methionine. Okay, so you can remember essential amino acid uh, using the mnemonic that is TV till PM. So as you can see TV till PM. So in this TV till PM, T, T is threonine, V is valine, uh, T is uh, tryptophan, I is isoleucine, L is leucine, another L is lysine and then uh, P is phenylalanine and M is methionine. So this is easy mnemonic TV till PM. So remember that. Okay. Now, uh, these essential amino acids always we need to take them in our diet. So, if there is any deficiency of single essential amino acid that can put us into negative nitrogen balance because our body proteins will start breaking to give those amino acids so that protein new protein synthesis uh, essential protein synthesis can go on. Okay. So now let us move on to see our next classification in this uh, nutritional classification that is uh, semi essential amino acids. What all these semi essential amino acids? Semi essential amino acids are the ones that are needed only during positive nitrogen balance conditions. 
Now, that means what is the meaning of positive nitrogen balance? So, I have a video on nitrogen balance. I have explained what is nitrogen balance, what is positive nitrogen balance, what is negative nitrogen balance, conditions for positive and negative nitrogen balance. Link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing in the upper right corner right now. So, what all these semis, what are the names of semi essential amino acids? So, we have four semi essential amino acids. One is cysteine, other is uh, arginine and the third is histidine and fourth is tyrosine. So, EG mnemonic for uh, remembering essential amino acid is CHART. So, you can remember CHART as an essential, uh, semi essential amino acid, sorry. So, C for cysteine, H, H for histidine, A for arginine and T for tyrosine. So, these are the semi essential amino acids which are needed only during positive nitrogen balance condition. Now, let us get into other classification. Our next classification is hydrophobic amino acids. So, hydrophobic amino acids are the ones which are uh, not soluble in water. So, they are soluble in uh, lipid. So, that means in a globular protein all these hydrophobic amino acids are buried in interior core of a globular protein which are well protected and also in a membrane protein uh, hydrophobic amino acids are present in the transmembrane portion or membrane spanning domain of a transmembrane portion only where it is passing through the membrane that is where most of the time you see hydrophobic amino acids on the extracellular side or to the cytoplasmic side you generally see hydrophilic amino acids. Let us see what all the hydrophobic amino acids. So, hydrophobic amino acids we have glycine, we have alanine, we have valine, we have leucine, uh, isoleucine, uh, proline, then methionine, phenylalanine, tryptophan. So, these are the hydrophobic amino acids. How do you remember hydrophobic amino acids? There is a mnemonic here, PIMP, GAL, TV. Why this mnemonic PIMP, GAL, TV? Because in uh, previous essential amino acid categorization, we have made a mnemonic that is a TV till PM. So, just to continue the TV thing, TV till PM. So, here it is PIMP, GAL, TV. So, P for phenylalanine and uh, I for isoleucine, M for methionine, P for proline, G for glycine, A for alanine, L for leucine, T for tryptophan and V for valine. So, these are the hydrophobic amino acids. So, remember that. So, all uh, once you remember hydrophobic amino acid, uh, you can you now you know hydrophilic amino acids other than these hydrophobic amino acid rest of them are all polar hydrophilic amino acids. Okay. Now, let us look into our next classification that is a branched chain amino acids. Now, we have three branched chain amino acids here. So, they, they are uh, valine, isoleucine and uh, leucine. So, as you can see there are the branches in these three branched chain amino acids. Side chains have got branches in the valine, isoleucine has got a branch here and leucine has got a branch. That is why these are called as branched chain amino acids. Now, our next categorization is aromatic amino acids. Now, aromatic amino acids we have phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan. So, all these three aromatic amino acids as you can see uh, phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan all of them they have got aromatic ring and that is why these are called as aromatic amino acids. Our next classification is sulfur containing amino acids. Now, the sulfur containing amino acids we have two of them one is a methionine other is a cysteine. So, in the methionine sulfur is not free it is making a bond here whereas, in the cysteine this sulfur is free that means SH group or the thiol group. So, this SH group it can interact with the another cysteine molecule in a polypeptide chain or maybe when it is in individual form two amino cysteines can come together make a disulfide bridge and that is what is the cysteine. So, cysteine and methionine are sulfur containing amino acids. We have three hydroxyl containing amino acids. So, those are uh, serine, threonine and tyrosine. Serine, threonine and tyrosine these three amino acids contain hydroxyl group as you can see there in the side chain there is hydroxyl group uh, serine, threonine has got hydroxyl group and tyrosine has got a hydroxyl group. So, we have three hydroxyl containing amino acids uh, that is serine, threonine and tyrosine. We have two acidic amino acids. Acidic amino acids are uh, aspartate and glutamate. Why they are acidic amino acids? Because under physiological pH 7.4 the side chain of uh, aspartate and glutamate. So, 
they got a, a net negative charge here see coo minus carboxyl group is there here one negative charge another negative charge and one positive charge so uh, two negative and one positive so net positive charge there uh, cha net uh, net negative charge is there in the aspartate and also similarly in glutamate we have net negative charge one net negative charge is there in the glutamate that's why aspartate and glutamate are negatively charged amino acids and are physiological ph 7.4 we have uh, three basic amino acids that is arginine uh, we have lysine and histidine so out of arginine lysine and histidine arginine and lysine are referred as strongly basic amino acids whereas histidine is referred as weakly basic amino acid why because arginine has this guanidinium group here and that guanidinium group has got a positive charge NH2 here. Similarly, lysine has NH, NH3 plus. So, that means under physiological pH, so both arginine and lysine are always uh, positively charged amino acids. Whereas histidine, histidine has got imidazole group here and the imidazole group PK of histidine is uh, 6 and uh, physiological pH is 7 so that means uh, most of the time so uh, some of these uh, histidine molecules are protonated some of them are deprotonated so that means it is not always positive not 100% of histidine is always positively charged that's why this is referred as a weakly basic amino acid so the, those there so that means there are three basic amino acids here lysine arginine and histidine that's about uh, a simple classification of amino acids so we have seen uh, uh, nutritional classification of amino acids, those are essential amino acids, non-essential amino acids, semi-essential amino acids. I have given you the mnemonics for essential amino acid and semi-essential amino acids. And then we have classified amino acids based on the you know, uh, R group or the side chain as hydrophobic amino acids. And then we have classified them into aromatic amino acids, branched chain amino acids, acidic amino acids, basic amino acids, sulfur containing amino acids and uh, so hydroxyl containing amino acids. So that is about it and uh, please watch my next series of this video which is there in, uh, right now here uh, which is a part 2 video uh, for amino acids. So here in this video I am explaining importance of uh, some of the selected amino acids. So please watch that video I am uh, I will see you in my next video right now. Thank you.